uh, let me see, because um, just now I saw only one uh, screen and then next we have like uh, quite a number of participants. Okay, good job. Okay, anyway, um, I would like to share uh, before we proceed with the article writing, I would like to share with you. Uh, hold on. Um, Dr. Nozita, can you help? Because I want to share the screen, but I cannot do so. Can you... uh, okay, uh, hang on, Prof. Okay, done, Prof. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, just to hold on. just just to give you an overview about the uh, TIG, that will be the citation citation index journal and also the non citation index journal. As you can see, um, it has been uh, I think in the news everywhere in the world. It seems that um, they are actually having problems with uh, lecturers uh, publishing in. Um, uh, predatory journals. I will explain that one a bit later. But before that, I just want to give you an overview about the about CIJ. Okay, CIJ is is actually is a this one actually previously I think how many years ago I got confused with uh, what what is the definition of CIJ the Citation Index Journal. My thought would be all any uh, any journals uh, which uh, consists of um, any citation that will be CIJ. I thought that way, but it's actually not. Uh, because CIJ is actually based on uh, the journals who will cite in uh, Web of Science journals uh, or Scopus or, or Open Access. Open Access will be actually, is actually uh, free. Uh, where else for this one, uh, Web of Science, mostly you have to pay for it as well as Scopus previously, like I mentioned in series one. Uh, previously, it's free, but nowadays, nothing is free. The minimum num uh, the mi minimum amount might be uh, the legit journals. What I'm saying is about the legit journals. <coughs> might be about 400 US dollars, and then it goes up to nearly 1,000 US dollars. Uh, uh, this problem, uh, uh, this problem, whereby uh, lecturers and students they tend to uh, send their journals to predatory journals okay this this would be the cij and then the non-cij it consists of open access and also nowadays also they still have hard copy journals okay and then why is it not moving hold on okay what is the web of science? It's a rich recollection of citation index representing the citation connection. Uh, so therefore, this one is actually uh, all the journals who sign for web of science, they will be actually uh, considered as quality journals. They have uh, they have own editorial board, they have their own uh, they will send your articles for uh, reviewing, not only one reviewer, they will they might be sending to two reviewers from uh, all over the world, not only from that, usually universities, they will come up with their own reviewers. But but actually, frankly speaking, it's best to have reviewers from other universities or other scholars. Uh, so therefore here, uh, sometimes uh, web of science also, uh, this, they actually apply for books as well, or meaning to say that if you have a book and then you wanted to have it under WUS, that would be a web of science, you can do so. But you have to uh, make sure that you contact the publisher uh, to sign for it, to apply for it. But not all application will be approved. It depends on the quality of the uh, of the book, the content. So they will, they will have to send it to um, professional reviewers based on their expertise. As well as proceedings as well. I know, I think you have come across when you attended conferences, uh, they actually promise you at the bottom, promise you that all papers will be uh, will be published in uh, proceedings. That mean, and then they put in bracket WS WUS. So it's actually marketing. It's for marketing purposes. They actually they wanted to attract more uh, authors, more writers, and uh, more scholars to present in their conference. And then at the same time, they promise uh, to uh, publish in proceedings. And then. But the problem is some uh, some universities they cannot accept proceedings, although it's uh, been published in Web of Science, 
Uh, but then in the, even the title is proceeding. It's not a full, art, it's not like article, full article. Uh, because proceeding is something like you present, you already presented in a conference. So that, that particular paper <coughs> will be published in pro, a conference proceeding. Okay, and then uh, is a core collection serves as a standard underpinning the general impact metric. So therefore in words, okay, when you publish in words, and then when somebody else uh, uh, cite your paper, uh, meaning to say that according to according to your name, according to your article, meaning to say that your uh, your name will, like say for example, they cite one, and then all over the world, everybody like you can see how many people cited your article, maybe hundred people or two hundred uh, cited your article, meaning to say your impact, your uh, your the imp will give you impact towards your age index. Uh, so that means your name will be famous from all over the world uh, because the quality of the paper is so uh, high that everybody wants to quote your paper. Uh, so here you can see that uh, uh, even the journals in Wolves also, they have their own uh, impact, uh, high impact. So meaning to say that uh, people are going to ask, okay, uh, what's the name of the journal? And then I mentioned this journal, okay, journal A. And then they will ask you, huh, uh, what would be the impact factor? Uh, the impact factor is actually written in the web page of that particular journal. Usually, for example, uh, engineering, science, the impact factor is going to be very high. So maybe it goes to like six point something, nine point something, the impact factor. But social science, especially for language, linguistics, communication, it's not that high. It, it, uh, because if you get uh, a journal with 0 0.05 impact factor, you should be blessed uh, because it's best impact factor. There are other journals with zero impact factor. Okay. And then if you see that um, here, you can see 10 to 12% of the three uh, core in, uh, uh, indices SSCI. Uh, okay, let me move this one. SSCI expanded. SSCI, this is social science. Uh, and then AH. CI, it actually depends on your uh, the journals that you wanted to submit. Uh, it also depends on your uh, how they say your expertise. If you your expertise in social science is either you want to submit it here or arts and humanities. It depends uh, because if you you accidentally send it to SCI index, whereas your paper is not is not on science, they will definitely reject your paper. Okay, and then. Uh, Okay, okay. Uh, the rules that be life science, biomedical sciences, engineering, social science, art and humanity. So rules will cover will cover all most of the field, uh, and the strongest coverage of natural sciences, health sciences, engineering, computer science, material sciences. Okay. Uh, so this one, uh, just to summarize about the rules, would be all this one. I think you have come across all this. All these journals would be, they will actually put it in the website. Okay, cited in SCI or SSCI. So all these would be, they have like impact factor. So it's very, very high quality journals and which uh, they have, okay, for your information, to apply for your journal to be submitted here, for example, IUKL, they want to submit to a WUS, they have to make an application, they have to apply for it, and then also they have to give proof for five years back, uh, the publication for five years back, any international authors, and also uh, you have to give proof of the website itself, uh, which consists of all the reviewers, the name of the reviewers, the name of the ed editorial board, and adversary board. You make sure that, okay, for example, I give you an example, uh, I was actually, uh, I am still uh, uh, in the advisory board for one journal in Malaysia, international journal. And then before they, they asked me to, to be one of the, uh, the panels, they, ha they have to check in uh, Scopus how many H index I have. Okay, meaning to say that if I have more, it, it, it must be more than five H index for in order for, for you to be part of the adversary board or editorial team. So that's how very meticulous they are. All right, and then, okay, I, I'll show you this. 
Okay, web website is actually uh, in Clarivert uh, website. Okay, I think you have come across this one. Uh, if you want to find out about any journals, okay, just bear in mind that if you want to submit, you cannot focus straight away submit. You have to find out uh, the quality of the journals, whether it is still in Woos. So therefore, uh, because you can see in the website, it states, it, maybe it stated, okay, um, uh, SSCI that would be under uh, CIJ uh, was so therefore it's un from two uh, 2005 until uh, 2020 but still this, this is beginning of uh, 2021 so therefore you have to make sure that you check here okay I give you an example you check the name of the journal an example uh, education I want to have like submit my article in education journal so they, you can check, for example, Academy of Management, Learning and Education. You go to the website, this particular website, it says, oh, 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 oh sorry, sorry. Uh, I was talking to myself. I was not sharing the screen. Where was it? Okay, this one. Okay, this is actually uh, the, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, I did not share the screen just now. Hold on. When I share this one, this is it's actually when you want to check whether uh, your article, uh, the journals that you want to submit is still under rules for that particular year. Bear in mind that in a year, they have to recheck all the journals, maybe about uh, uh, the minimum number of twice a year to six times a year. So maybe at that time, when you look at it, that the website, you can see that it's, it is still under rules. But after you submitted the article, because like I mentioned it before, that the article might take like one to two years to, uh, to be published and to be accepted. So therefore, at that time, it's already out. The journal is already being rejected from Woods. So meaning to say, there's no more CIJ there. Uh, so if you link, you click on this link. All right. And then I want to share this. Uh, hold on. I uh, stop sharing that one and then I share this. You will go to this website, okay? And then after that, you have to, let's say, you want to, if you have the name of the journal, the full name of the journal, you can type, but let's say I don't have uh, the name of the journal, but I just want to check whether uh, I can submit my paper to any education journal, for example. Uh, so they're actually suggesting I'll give you a list of all the journals under education. So let's say, okay, I want to submit here, Academy of Management, Learning and Education. So you can go to that. At the moment, all here, all the journals here, you see, all the journals here actually already under web no. Okay, go to go to the website so for example if i uh copy paste this and then i go to the website and then i have to come up the website of the journal and then you can check on the uh how to submit the journal all right uh, and then now okay this one uh, you already know how to uh check if let's say okay the so meaning to say now make sure that you check all the time but the thing is that if you're a bit lazy for example uh, you have your library all the universities definitely they, they have their library and they will actually have around one or two person who's in charge to check whether the journals uh, that you want to submit is still under woos so you email to this person give them uh, the full title of the journal give the um give the isbn number or issn number and then they will check they will reply to you yes uh, uh, the journal is still uh, registered and the boost so you got no problem straight away but make sure that make sure not only once twice and three times or so many times that the journal that you want to submit will be under cig woos or whatnot okay and then uh, and then we go to Scopus. Remember just now when I mentioned that Scopus is still under CIG, Citation Index Journal. Uh, so uh, 
same as uh, Wolves just now, there are actually thousands and thousands of article, uh, journals submitted to this a particular website. So this Scopus is the largest abstract citation database of peer review. Uh, they will definitely mention about peer review in what, what field. Uh, so if you look here, it's science, technology, medicine, social science, and most all of it. And even uh, engineering and all because engineering is all under science as well. And then the thing is that, okay, even uh, the journals uh, already registered in Scopus, they still, if they want to, they want to, they will still have to register under WUS as well. So that's why when you check on the website, some of the websites also mention uh, SCI just now, uh, uh, let's say social science or SCI. Uh, and then at the bottom, Scopus, meaning to say this journal already registered for both. But bear in mind that Scopus is a different website and then was another different website where they keep all the uh, all the names of the journals in there already registered and still legit. And then still oh, it's okay for you to submit and then still under SSEI or Scopus. Okay, the level, some of the students or lecturers will say, what's the level uh, between Scopus and uh, Woos? Uh, and and uh, Woos, for example. Okay, frankly speaking, like I mentioned just now, Woos, they have their own impact factor. But Scopus, they also have, but it's actually a bit lower than uh, Woos. Uh, so therefore, most of it, most of the students or authors, they would prefer to have just now, Woos. And then it let's say it's all always being rejected that like you submitted like 10 uh, journals, all, uh, all rejected. And then you try Scopus. Uh, it's not that it's really low quality, no. It's because that so many journals already registered at Woos, uh, and then some of it, they just want to register at Scopus. So the numbers would be different, okay. Now, if you check the website uh, for uh, Scopus, if, okay, let me share. How do you check your, uh, where's the thing? All right. Uh, okay, you go, just go to Scopus. All right, uh, can you see? You, you can see, right? All right. Just now when I showed you, just now, that would be the website for Woos. So here is the website for Scopus. All right, here, like I, okay, just to remind you again that you make sure that you check the journals that you want to start, submit still under Scopus. Okay, just frankly speaking, just to tell you the truth, I've come, I've come across this situation for so many times. I've already checked on the website, Scopus website. I've already checked at my library uh, at UPM library, they already confirmed that the journal is still under Scopus at that time. Okay, at that time. And then uh, I think I submitted around uh, somewhere in uh, this particular year, it's still Scopus. And then the journals, uh, the, uh, the journal, uh, let me see, publish my article somewhere in like blah, 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 somewhere in December, the same year. Uh, and then the same year, and I thought, and I thought that it's still under Scopus. And then when I check the website, it's not there anymore. The word Scopus is not there anymore. Where else? Uh, I already paid my fees uh, for the uh, for the publication because you know the process uh, because I submitted in June already accepted, and then they asked for payment. I already paid for it, and then I have like this very high confidence saying that my uh, my article going to be published in Scopus, and then suddenly I don't know of whether it's in December it, the the journal already out from Scopus or is it from July or August or which month, but then. You know, it, the fees already been paid, and then uh, I, I got no choice. Then uh, still, it's going to be published in December, but then it's not Scopus anymore. So it's I don't know whose fault is it. I do, cannot say it's my fault because at that time it's still Scopus. So how do you check? All right, you go to sources. Okay, and then you go subject area. Okay, you can check what subject area do you want. There's so many here. All right, but but uh, okay. Let's say you will go to for philosophy, philosophy or biochemistry. There's a lot. 
and then uh, you go for subject area if you have the title you can check the title let's say you go for uh malaysian journal of communication okay this one journal communication fine sources yep still there still under scopus but if i check just now at worst it's not there because i heard that they they they're in the process of applying i heard so if you check here okay make sure that okay you click on that particular journal all right go down all right you have to check one by one because the thing is that why do you have to check one by one because if you see all right site score how many all right here 2019 377 citations from 2016 2019 but some journals they don't even put 2020 it's like zero here zero here meaning to say the journal already out of scopus so if let's say now last year it's 2020 there's still citations there 524 citations so meaning to say that it's still going on uh, meaning to say that this journal is still active and then uh, there's a lot of citation if let's say the journal, like I mentioned it, I mentioned it again, okay? I will say it again here that uh, because here is actually from the day that the journal uh, applied for Scopus until the day, because this one is actually 2020, this is 2019. So therefore, if let's say here, there's a, so many citation, suddenly 2020, no citation at all. Zero citation, zero, both zero. Here also zero. Uh, so I have to make sure, check again and again and again. So meaning to say that this journal is already out of Scopus. Same goes with Woos just now. So find some more article, other articles. So you go back, all right, and then you try to find, uh, uh, if you don't know, any communication journal. You just write communication. Uh, see, there's a list of it. There's a list of communication journals in Scopus. All right. So let's say if you want to have like uh, be specific, you cannot just simply say engineering. If you say uh, engineering, uh, of course there's so many, but then you your focus. If you want to have mechanic mechanical engineering, you fine. Okay. Let's say okay, you want this one, lecture notes in mechanical engineering. Find the sources, click, and then the list will. And the, oh, suddenly it's not there. Uh, meaning to say, the journal already out from Scopus. Okay, so let's say I uh, find another one uh, where the journal is. If if you have the I S S N number, put it there. If you have the publisher name, put it there. Okay, let's say publisher, and then you want to put Springer. Okay, there's a lot of Springer there. Is it Springer Nature? Springer Publishing Company? If let's say Springer Nature. All right. And then look. Okay, all under Springer Nature. That would be for, for the publisher. Okay, for, for let's say you already published right for what? 20 articles in Scopus. Okay. And then in Scopus, okay, wherever you go, in, in academic world they will ask how many h index do you have uh, it's so typical right? when you see anyone and how many h index do you have the more h index is better but the thing is that to get one h index under scopus uh, uh, articles from over all over the world will cite your article about maybe 20 20 uh, 20 citation then only get one something like that but okay i show you how do you want to find uh, uh okay you put here wait hold on author search okay you go to author search you type your name okay author's last name okay let's for example i give uh, this uh, lady's name uh, but with Okay, this is Siti Noralia's, Dr. Siti Noralia's name, and then affiliation, uh, infra, uh, 
University, University Infrastructure University Kuala Lumpur. Okay, search. But you have to check. There's so many city in Australia here. Okay, if this is one, but you have to check the last title. That uh, you don't need to submit in Scopus your article. It's automatic because you know why? Uh, because the journal that you submit, let's say for I already submitted to this particular journal. That journal is under Scopus, and then uh, all the individual references in your article, they actually uh put it automatically in Scopus. Only Scopus article. So you check the last article. Okay. Okay. This is actually hers. Uh, because there may be there are about like 20 city in Auraria, uh, Roseland in uh, all over the world. Check this one. Uh, can you see this word? H index. So she has one H index. Okay. Let's say this last article. I'm not sure whether this is hers. Uh, Okay, check this one. Whether is this her? Okay, this is her. What you can do if all this this three names is your name, make sure you apply in here in this particular website to merge. Okay, make sure to merge in such a way you have only one city Noralia Roseland. So the document will be five, six, seven, seven documents. And then your age index, maybe still one, because maybe not many people cite your article, but at least to get one, it's not that bad. Five articles. Uh, five articles meaning to say that uh, maybe uh, how many people cite your article, then only you get one. Okay? Uh, so one is actually really, really a blessing. Just to get one is so difficult to get. Okay, merge. Make sure to merge all this. Uh, and also bear in mind, don't simply merge because some of it, like I mentioned just now, uh, there are about maybe 50 city no area roads land in all over the world. So maybe it's not you, but based on the affiliation might be you. And then look here, even the city would be different. This is Kajang, this is Lango. So merge in such a way. Here, the website, you have uh, the application for merge whereby you have to fill in the form, and then you give whatever you have here and then they will do it like in one week, uh, seven working days. And then suddenly there's only one. Okay, you can check your H index. How many H index do you have? But the, the H index is when you publish your article in Scopus only. If you publish your article in um, Woos just now, it might not come out because this is under uh in um IUKL journal, IUKL journal which is not uh which is not uh, not registered in copper. So there's nothing happened here, nothing happened. Uh, because it's not under scopus, nothing happened. Okay, uh so now uh you already know how to do uh the author research check. You can check like million times a day. You know, maybe it might change. Maybe uh, next week uh somebody else cited your article maybe another 30 or 30 people cited your article it would be better your issue that will increase and then here the sources would be you have you can check uh the article uh whether it's still okay you look here uh th these are all the articles registered under scopus uh, for example if like cancer journal for uh, clinicians and you check here you check the higher percentile and you check citation how many wow there's a lot uh, usually science or medical journals they got no problem they got no problem with a citation and then here documents how many documents so far uh and then cited how many cited did look at here you make sure that you look here but the thing is that uh, that will be the latest uh they they have not updated the 2020 yet so there is under 2019 but like just now, I mentioned it to you that if you open the journal, uh, they still have the 2020 here. Wow, that's a lot. Look at that. What are they doing? They got they have no, they have lied you during COVID. 20,000, nearly 21,000 sites at this journal. Oh, we have to read this uh, nature review material. 
wow, if you look at here, this would be the subject area. I, if you have this subject area, send, send it here because it's really, really famous because the more citation, that means it's better. I think this journal also registered under Woof. So therefore, it's really, really legit journal. Okay, so you understand about how do you check the articles, whether the article that you want to submit is under citation in that journal. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, okay, enough about the scopus. Oh, okay, it's not moving. Okay, that's another one. Just now I uh, mentioned Woos, they have their own website. Scopus, they have their own website. Now OpenSS, they have their own website as well. Okay, meaning to say again that if IUKL, they want to uh, apply uh, apply for to put their journal in OpenSS, also fine, but it depends whether they, they can accept it or not. Okay, uh, OpenSS also consists of journals submitted in Scopus, consists of journal submitted in rules as well. Uh, so example, I have my own journal at my university, for example, the name of the journal is for example, Nature again. I applied for all these websites, to the rules, to Scopus, to open access. Okay, but not all open access is free or you can open and you have full article. Some of it, you still got to pay. Rules, definitely you got to pay. Suddenly you go to website, Google, and then you type this one, I want to have this article. And then it come, uh, uh, the article, but then if you want to click for PDF version or you want to click full article, suddenly at the bottom, it says that you have to pay $40, 40 US dollars. Still, you got to pay. Uh, so here, the open access, uh, uh, just to let you know that UPM, they have said, okay. I stop share this one. I open and go here. Okay. Okay. UPM, they, they actually, this is open access, meaning to say everybody can look here. Uh, you can oh, just open this website and then they have all these open access journal. Uh, journal, open access journal, frontiers, MDPI, and so on. There's so many here, Salem Francis. Oh, this one is so difficult to get in, you know. Salem Francis. Uh, you know, if you if my article been submitted here and got accepted, I can have like Kenduri five days and five nights. Uh, okay, here you see this article also registered in Woos. Most of it also registered in Scopus. And they also registered as open access. But here, uh, for students especially, and also for lecturers, you can go to this website and you can have full article. I say, let's say I open this one. Okay, I open page. Okay. Uh, page journal, they have like, uh, all, they have to, all these journals, they may have to make sure they have to be very transparent. They have to list out all the editorial team. They have to list out all the instruction how. And then here, okay, let's say, I want, let's say this is the latest, published to 2021. Okay, I mean, this is all. all right. Okay, and then, you are so lucky. They have full article here. Not many article is free, and it's it's like you have to pay. So maybe it's like just they put a abstract there without the body, without the without the article. So you are lucky to have a very recent literature, uh, a very recent article for you for your uh, for your own article. So this is good. This is really really good. So see the pragmatic consideration for plan implemented imp uh, implementation improvement. Uh, so if you're doing something on urban or special planning, get this article for your and cite this article. And then, uh, uh, because like I mentioned, not okay. Let's say it's a, a stage open, uh, because these are all all articles. Wow, they have like 3,213 articles. 
uh, you can check one by one. Uh, they have all the PDF version and whatnot. Full article. If, let's say, you go to uh, uh, journal. Malaysian journal usually is open access. Uh, meaning to say that you can open and you can see all full articles, but not all articles that way. Let's say if you go to uh, how to say journal a communication journal, not that communication journal. Okay, let's say uh, you I want this uh, journal of communication, but. But usually, I uh, see all these general you know, questions, they have the impact factor. Uh, you also must check what's the volume number. If the volume number is less than five, it's really, really impossible to get scopus or underwoods. Definitely impossible. So usually, like for example, volume 71 meaning to say uh, maybe what? For how many years already? Uh, maybe one year they have like two volume or one year usually one volume except for the issue so we can assume that this article like 71 years ago wow seriously all right let's see uh see which is this step they're actually doing business here uh they're actually doing business so you got no choice if you look at the journal and then you see that uh the journal is really related to your study and then you want to uh okay let's see agenda open some see whether whether they can if it's full article it's really a blessing wow it is okay wrong example i've given you wrong example i should have given you like i think you have come across uh uh across of this is a come across articles whereby it's actually uh they have the title there they have all everything here the volume even the doi they have the abstract and then suddenly they view article when you click and then you say okay if you want full article please pay 40 dollars us dollars and then then only you can upload the the article but this is considered as lucky because this is open access all right so make sure that uh you go for open access journal so the end it's free okay uh not this one sorry what the picture will be. Oh, sorry. Okay, now uh, uh, let me on reading. Ah, so you can take this uh link uh so that you can go to or you can just go to UPM website and go to three and then uh there's a list of journals which all right, let me just show you again. Yeah, the open access journal, you can open because all these, these uh, journals actually very, very famous. And then it's easier for you to have full article, full article, not only the abstract, but full article, but also very much and also a uh, uh, bogus or predatory journal okay let me share share you this one okay we're done with open access okay that's not already mentioned about the discontinued corpus journals and then uh, okay what is actually predatory journal and now okay when i read when i read this word predatory is something like you're the predator uh like the movie alien and predator and then it's actually like a bogus uh, journal. They existed for the sake of business purposes. Uh, they want to get the, you know, they, they actually feel they rich. If you look at it, take uh, advantage of authors by asking them. So you must make sure that look at the website, whether the website is like consists of, uh, they mention about the peer review, okay? Or did they mention about editing services uh, because this is all about money uh, because a predatory publisher do not follow the proper academic standards for publishing they usually offer a quick turnaround on publishing a manuscript you just imagine there are 
so many out of the blue suddenly there's so many journals like publish 12 times a year meaning to say monthly monthly uh, so it's like uh, ridiculous you can see that it's ridiculous uh, but high quality academic journals will take longer like like i mentioned it to you in the first series whereby i submitted in 2016 and then it's published in 2018 but it takes so long uh, because of the process uh, because after the reviewing the amendments and correction and then we have to email it back to them they have to check it and then they email back us and then read there's so many here and there and then lastly the uh, is very uh is it's going to be a very quality article so but predatory uh if you submit the article and then suddenly there's no response from the uh from the journal or saying that you have to correct this one or there's no review review note from the reviewer, and then suddenly they ask for payment, and then they say that it's already been accepted, and then your article is going to be published for the end of the month, and then uh, you are actually in the beginning you were saying that oh but this journal is corpus, uh, but it's so easy to get in, well uh, never mind I'll just pay. By the end of the day, it's actually predatory journal. How did you do it? Okay, how? So you will check open access journals may solicit authors to publish for a fee but maintain high standard of peer review and editing the goal of open access publishing to disseminate research to a larger audience open access so how how predatory journals differ from open access so this would be the differences because the open access they're really very very uh, particular in terms of having a very quality article so check always check okay how can you spot that is a little bit or not okay uh you have, you can ask your friends uh, about this okay uh, have you heard about this journal before and then and said, no i haven't and then check again uh do you recognize check the list of names in editorial board because usually editorial board uh, all the professors from all over the world check whether the names actually exist some of the names they just simply put it in because this is actually business purposes like i mentioned before uh, so you can uh copy paste the name in the editorial board and then just put in google search whether the name exists from that particular university because editorial board they put the name uh, uh the name and then in bracket from which university so if you put in google you have to you want to find out whether the name existed or not suddenly that was that was a particular university there's no name at uh, this name so meaning to say they just create name for uh, the professor something 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 uh, so that people would believe that this journal is of very famous professors from all over the world okay can you easily contact the publisher okay this is one whereby in the journal website uh there's not even email address uh, there's not even uh, anything that you want to contact. You want to ask about the, uh, the, the this particular publisher. There's no email address at all. And they ask you to submit the article by using the website that they have in there. So that means machine is doing the work. Uh, machine is also like replying your email. So it's not them particularly, it's from human. So actually they are human. They are trying to just try to trick us. Is the journal clear about their peer review process? Uh, so you have to check how many. So in the instruction uh, given and the website, usually it's going to be very clear the peer reviewing process. So if you get back your article from that journal, say, and then they submitted. They also attach two uh, word document from a reviewer, and the reviewer already commented on everything uh, in terms of literature review or everything, and then. Uh, and then you have to do amendments according uh, to the report. So meaning to say the review and process is really going well. Uh, but if you receive a journal, okay, with from two reviewers, but there's no comment, but it's like really excellent, whereby you know that your article is not that really high standard, but you will find it really, really, uh, Something is wrong. We have to read again. 
Uh, and then what about the fees? Uh, if the fees will be charged for nowadays, this one is not really a good question for predatory journal because all the really legit journals also they ask for fees. Okay, so you have to check. So the the main thing is that uh, if you just be lazy to check at the Wolf's website or Scopus website or open access uh, uh, journal uh, website, email to your to, to email to the library because library they they have all the list all the list there for journals and then they have to recheck on that website they were they actually helping you all right how okay this is what happened i think you heard about uh jeremy bill okay he, he is actually uh a librarian from university of somewhere in the west i think most of us we heard about him uh, like i said just now librarian usually they have all this access of list of journals so he actually wrote in his blog and he actually listed okay stop share i want to share this one uh, okay he actually listed all predatory journals and as well as publishers this happened somewhere in what 2012 2011 somewhere somewhere there and then he actually uh after he put it in his blog everybody read the blog because he lists out all this list look all this predatory journal cannot be accepted it's actually uh for business purposes it's not no quality at all uh they created the website for the sake of money uh and some of the journals i don't know how they did it because they are so so clever uh let's say for example this journal the original journal is actually for for example i give you the but if this is not the truth the the original journal is actually uh in woos in woos and then this business people i think how many of them we don't know they get the uh website okay they copy exactly the same they copy exactly the ISSN number, they copy exactly the name of the uh, the journal, and they come up with their own. Okay, this is what happened. And then uh, everybody wants to submit to this journal, the, the fake one, the fake journal. And then the fees is something like 400 to 500, some of it like 800 US dollars. But, but if I check, this journal is still another world. So I don't know whether this is the legit one or this is the fake one. So we don't know. That that's what happened. We don't know. Huh? Until the original journal, right? Published in newspaper saying that and then give proof that they actually have a journal which is like hard copy journal. They don't have any online journal. Uh, they have been published about how many like 50, 60 years already. Uh, but but the problem is all most writers most authors they cannot find the hard copy because the hard copy is in that particular country and it's not being disseminated to other countries so they don't know so so now who to blame is it the the original author of that particular journal uh, uh, or is it this website this particular website uh the one is supposed to be for business purposes or who to blame because for example, I already published there, so I already paid for it, and it's already online. I can see my paper published online, and it's under Woods. I have like, and then that particular journal has consists uh, has like a five point seven impact factor. For example, so I don't want to get back my article because it's already been published there, and everybody most and I have a lot of citation from that article in that particular website. So what am I going to do? This is what this is the lemma for most authors, for especially for among academic academicians. So we don't know. Uh, so here, look, and then you know what happened to this person, this uh, Mr. Bill. So he's retired now. I heard. Uh, after one week or how many days after he put in his blog, it seemed that all the journals, most of the journal majority from these journals, attacked him. Okay, in terms of emailing him and then published in the newspaper saying that he's still uh, selling lies and then uh, there's a few companies 
a, a few publishers even uh, take legal action towards him. So he was actually in trouble at that time. So he, uh, I'm sure that at that time he has like uh, you know all this um, in in America is something like if you have like not illegal legal action is fine. If if they send somebody uh, to kill you, then there goes Jeremy Bale. He's totally gone. I don't know whether he's still alive or not, but I heard that uh, people say that he's, he has to move somewhere or whatnot uh, because he's really, really, really in trouble. Because most of the journals that he listed is actually for business. So that's why when they list, the journal, the, the business definitely going to go down. So that's what happened. Uh, so this one actually been out uh, the, uh, because although he already closed his blog, uh, and then, but actually somebody else did manage to screen capture and rewrite everything, the list of these journals. There's a lot. If you look at it, there's a lot until that. So that's why. So that's why people, they have like, uh, they feel that uh, he is not telling the truth. But the thing is, he is telling the truth. Uh, so it's between him and all these businessmen, okay? And so you have to check also in this list whether it's predatory or not. Uh, but the thing is that this list is actually from 2012 or something. But now, but now if you check, okay, if let's say if you want to check a uh, list of predatory journals and then the latest you put 2020 and then they have like not only best, best uh, for 2020 so they added a few more not a few i think hundreds more at least for predatory journal so you have you can find out that way whether this journal is predatory or is it like um uh, i'm not sure that i heard about this journal before uh, it's from uh, Poland, if I'm not mistaken. This is actually for business as well. Uh, it's really, really 100% fake. But it mentioned in the website, it says that it's like WUS, registered under WUS. So, and then I check on uh, current issues and also the archive issues. There's so many people submitted. So it's really convincing, really convincing in the middle. I, if, if I feel really convinced, I feel like, why not? Because there's so many people submitted, it's already been published online. So why not? I try uh, something like that. Then things will check again and again and again, so that you're not one of the predators. Okay, so now, uh, so the list of predatory. So today is actually, I already explained to you about words, also about scopus and also about open access journal. How do you submit each of the journal? And then list of predatory journal. Okay, bear in mind, not only this list, there are other lists as well, because every year, uh, oh yeah, by the way, just forgot to tell you, um, there's a number of, uh, in, from Indian journals, they, they actually uh, took legal action at that time to build, to this person. Because they are journals, or they actually, you know, Indian journals, they have like under one company, under one publisher, they have like 30 journals. Uh, so he found out, Jeremy Bill found out. So therefore, this company took legal action with him at that time. But we don't know the result. I don't know with the result because they did not put it in the newspaper. But but the problem is like this although, although they, he listed out, the journal is still there. Uh, they try to make other types of uh, marketing strategy in such a way that the the students or the academician will submit their paper, and then they give they promise like okay this this will be under uh, wolves this will be under scopus this will be so your H and X is going to increase you know all this marketing strategy, uh, so so just be careful make sure that email just email to your library. Make sure to get confirmation or check yourself in the particular website. If let's say, okay, if let's say, um, uh, 
I just want to show you. Uh, this is uh, Prof. Farida's uh, uh, expertise. I think Prof. Farida is uh, part of the team before, right, Prof. Farida? Okay, let's see. General communication, general of communication. You check everything. I, we know that this is from UKM. Okay. Uh, but the thing is that bear in mind, there are other people also, they want to do business. They copy exactly like this. Even the website also exactly like this. Uh, okay. They put, you have to be very transparent. The journal is very transparent. Uh, they put Scopus. Okay. Elsevier. And then you check this first. Abstracting and indexing. Uh, and you check. They cited where? Coppers, Elsevier, blah, blah, blah. They have all the lists. Okay, all the lists. See here? Yeah? It has been indexed, abstracted in emerging SEI, emerging web of science. So in, this is good as well because it's emerging. Uh, so already been indexed there. It, meaning to say this under WUS. Look, web of science under WUS. So you 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 will get your uh, your your article published here is going to be very quality. Uh, check here first, but not because of a general communication. You uh, communication journal. You still got to check in that most website uh, just to confirm, reconfirm, and then you check again at Corpus website whether the journal exists, whether the citation for two thousand uh, twenty. Uh, there's so many citations in 2020. Uh, you have to check again in, before you submit your article. And also, just now, like I said, this journal is very uh, transparent because, okay, home, if you go to home, uh, you see, everything is there. And, and then about, see, the editorial team, uh, you check whether this person exists. So if I were, to click uh, from, okay, this is not you. Okay, I don't want from you, okay, um, oh, all from you, okay. Oh, auditor board. Okay, let's say I want to click here. Okay, and then I'm not confident whether is she really from UKM? So I just copy paste the name and go to Google, find out whether she is in, uh, in UKM or not. Uh, because we are actually want to find out whether this particular person exists. So therefore you have, you must find out. Okay, and then uh, about editorial team and then they have like register search. You have, must have everything here. And then uh, your, how do you, uh, especially like this one. Uh, this one usually all journal, if they're very particular, they have the submission guideline definitely. And then they also must have the format of referencing on how do you uh, write your references and then the ethics statement, but but frankly speaking, in predatory journals or the fake journals, they have this one as well. So we don't know. Huh? It's that we really, really don't know whether it is the one. Huh? And then uh, everything is exactly, exactly like the fake journal. So we don't know. Huh? That's how, that's what happened in the newspaper when we've been for this few weeks. It started last week actually, and then until this week, they are actually arguing about academician from all over the world uh, submitting articles in predatory journals. Uh, but if you check, if you do it yourself, if you check the journals, you also don't know whether it's predatory or not. You or, you already checked in Woos, the journal existed. You check in Scopus, the journal existed, but. Like I said just now, there are also cases whereby they actually ask people to copy exactly the same as the website. But the charge, the fees charge is different. Maybe this one is like, uh, if you, uh, the, re the really, really authentic, the real journal is a bit cheaper, whereas this one, it goes like, like 1,000 US dollars. So you have to really, really check. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I hope you understand about uh, before your general submission. <clears throat> before I proceed, I just want to have like a um, recap, uh, just a little bit of recap. Uh, share screen. 
Hmm. Actually, I wanted good document, but, but never mind. <coughs> okay. Uh, the, uh, recap, you have your title. Uh, remember your article. You have your title, and then you write your name, your affiliation, and also your uh, email address. Uh, but this actually depends on the journal, on your the instruction when you want to submit your journal. <laughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> and then uh, you have your uh, abstract. And then after the abstract, you have your keywords. Right? Remember, your keywords will be we want people to cite your article. So make sure your keywords is actually uh, based on your study. So actually it's uh, on your topic, the variable from your topics and also the content. And then make sure that if you want to write your keyword, we want everybody to cite. We want everybody to read your, our, our article. So make sure the keyword is the right one. And then your introduction. Uh, your introduction, uh, like I mentioned, you must have one or two paragraphs. Uh, what we have in your introduction would be uh, the introduction. Hold on. Okay, the introduction will be the background of the study and also your RP, the search problem. And, that, and then would be your lead review. The lead review will be there are two ways of writing whether you want to write the word literature review or you want to write studies on blah, 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 or and because you're going to split two subtopics based on the two variables from your title. It depends. So this one, you might, you can have like two paragraphs for each subtopic. So maybe minimum of four paragraphs uh, or not too many because we don't want, when you finish your article, uh, the number of uh, pages for, uh, for introduction and literature review and methodology is uh, longer than your result. Your result should be longer. Okay, your result should be longer. The number of words for result should be longer than the top one. Okay, minimum for paragraph and also straight away after literature review, uh, I ask you to put the a sentence for objective. Because uh, we don't want a subtopic for your objective because we don't want any um, confusion among readers uh, saying that the objective is is like a one paragraph. We don't want that uh, because you already mentioned here and also mentioned here uh, here in your literature review also when you want to explain about the uh, the, the studies done, uh, you also must mention about the gap related to your study because all literature review definitely have gap. So you must mention and then after that your methodology Okay, and the methodology, you can have minimum number of one and a maximum of two uh, because we don't need to have uh, too long explanation, but make sure you explain according to, like I mentioned just now, if you have a sample and then you have a location, be specific. And then proceed how do you carry out your study and so on. And then if you have like, uh, you are actually analyzing uh, a book, a novel, or you are analyzing, a, um, uh, you know, if you work in the bank, there's a this stick of prospectus. So you, you must have the uh, synopsis or summary of that particular book. Okay, that will be maybe the second paragraph. And also don't forget to mention that you're using this particular theory, except for quantitative survey. Because quantitative survey is actually, you are actually looking at somebody else's, uh, you are referring to somebody else's uh, study. And then th this would be your result and discussion. Okay. Uh, this one is actually being asked by Dr. Nura last week. Uh, can I, uh, she did mention about can we have like uh, citation in the, in, in the results, like uh, your interpretation, and then not in the summary of results. Because there are so many ways of writing results and discussion. But when we submit articles, we want to make sure that the reviewer, the reviewers, understand uh, clearly so that's why we don't want to complicate things 
if you are using theory for in, in your article, make sure the results on discussion, the discussion with an two will be based on the theory that you want to use. If you simply put a theory here, you mentioned that you want to use a theory, but in the results and discussion, there's nothing at all to do with theory. So it's totally wrong. So Maxwell must be related. So that's why you have to make sure that the theory that you want to you choose is actually you are doing it or you, you discuss it in uh, for your results and discussion. Okay, and after that, if let's say uh, you don't want to have the result, the summary of the result, we can do so as well. Like I mentioned last week, yeah, there are so many different types of writing. So you have, you might, you make sure because there's here, okay, I did mention it to last week, between uh, the difference between results and discussion, there are two different things. The results will be whatever you have, the findings that you have, you are actually like, you have get the evidence and then you are interpreting the evidence, the interpret the data, and then after that you discuss. All right, and after that you discuss. Uh, whereby it's either you discuss by uh, by referring to all the, uh, by supporting all the literature from the literature review, or you discuss, you know, in such a way that uh, the reviewer and also readers will understand that this result is for this particular reason. And then you are relating it, uh, related with the theory that you have. So make sure that the, this discussion is really in depth, not only uh, giving like uh, interpreting the data. Because usually, because of, I come across like so many articles, they only have this part. They only have the results, but not the discussion. They only like have the evidence, and then they interpret the evidence, but not discussion. So it's two different things, all right? Then only conclusion. Uh, so like conclusion is for the benefit or what will be your, uh, for your implication. So that means implicate who, okay, what is it for? Is it for uh, your Ministry of Education? Is it for the company, building companies? Or is it for uh, songwriters uh, to explain more? And for, to tell you last week that the last sentence in your conclusion, Okay, the last, wait, I forgot, sorry. The last sentence in your conclusion. Okay, you have, you, you're supposed to write, uh, it is for that uh, further studies. So that means you are actually giving, uh, uh, giving ideas to, to the readers or to uh, researchers on what will, we be, what will be the next studies on? But it has to be based on your study. So if your study is about bicycle, so your further study is about bicycle, but in another way, another different aspect of bicycle. So you cannot have like the last sentence, it is hoped that for the study, if let's say your, your studies is on bicycle just now, suddenly you talk about uh, cosmetic. There's nothing to do with these two. So you are suggesting, you are giving your recommendation to other uh, readers and also uh, academicians or students or whatnot to, to have like further studies in this area, uh, the area that you mentioned. Uh, so last sentence, you mentioned this. And also in your abstract, the last, mention, the last sentence also you have to mention, it is hoped that future studies or further studies uh, will focus on something else. Okay, this one, I apologize because I forgot to mention it to you last week. So, but the last sentence in the abstract, although it's like actually nearly the same, but do not copy paste. Don't copy paste this one, you put it here, no. Try to paraphrase the sentence in such a way that it is still suggestion for further study. Okay. Uh, I, because I remember that one because Dr. Nora did mention about the uh, result, uh, the summary of results. There are so many ways. It depends on your uh, creativity in writing, in writing your articles. But bear in mind, uh, if so, you, you are so creative in writing, it might complicate things as well. The reviewer might be so confused that you, they, they really don't know what you're writing. So you're in trouble there. So make sure it's really simple to read 
and then when you look at it at one glance, uh, it's like really a research paper, complete research paper. Uh, the one that explained this one is actually a research paper. There are so many different different types of articles you can write. Uh, for example, like I mentioned to you, there's a different types of writing a concept paper, uh, another type of this one, or this type of that one. There will be other sessions. Okay, this one is actually the most uh, favorite among uh, academicians and researchers, whereby it's based on evidence. It has to be based on evidence. You, it's not going to be wrong because the evidence is actually for the authors. They found the evidence and give proof and interpret the data and then discuss about the evidence. I think it's all there. Okay, I think uh, this actual recap from what we had uh, last week. And then I really hope that uh, we can discuss more. If you have any question, uh, you can ask me question now. Uh, don't let me stop sharing. You can ask me questions. Hopefully, if you want to have ask questions in the chat, can you put in capital letters uh, so that we can differentiate between questions and also not chatting in them? Okay, Dr. Nuzita. Okay, yes, sure, Prof. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. Um, very very uh, interesting talk here yeah, very informative right now we open the session for q and a uh, as mentioned by prof dr nomaliza if you have your questions in the chat box please write in capital letters to differentiate your question with other messages in the chat box yeah uh, alternatively you may also uh, turn on the microphone and speak yeah uh, either way all right yeah thank you in fact, if you want to share whatever you have done so far, you can do so. Uh, if you are a bit shy to share with all your friends here, I don't know how to comment on that. Uh, but then it's, it's okay, you know, because we are in the learning process. Uh, so it's okay, it's fine. Do you have any questions? Is Vivian here today? I thought she has so many questions to ask. From here. Ah, you yeah, I cannot see you, Vivian. Uh, just now is a Chinese, the uh, still Chinese New Year <laughs> holiday. So ah. I, yeah, yeah. I live in my the parents in laws room. They they don't have the the uh, video. Cannot open the. Actually, I would like uh, to ask uh, about uh, 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 Malaysia. Uh, is there have any international uh, journals under the SICIs? Okay, thank you, Vivian. Okay, uh, uh, actually, I'm showing you just now about uh, how to find uh, journals under Wood. Uh, Wood is uh, SSCI. So, uh, if you're doing an education, I'm sure Vivian is uh, doing a PhD in education. So, uh, in education per se, in Malaysia, SSCI uh, is not specifically because um, I cannot find one actually. Uh, like, well, you can actually, although your, article, uh, your PhD is in education, if you write an article, do not put the education there, uh, uh, because if you are doing something on, uh, let's say for example, speaking, or you can as might as well send it just now to communication journal. Uh, but communication journal is uh, is it just now I'm, uh, I showed it to you. Is it extended? I'm not. Is is it extended? S C I, uh, E X C I. That one, I think that one can be accepted as well, Vivian, but I'm not sure your country will accept that one as uh, fully as SCI or SCI. You can try, but make sure when you submit, do not write the word education there because or else it's going to be rejected because communication journal is more for uh, words communication. But, uh, but, uh, but but we prof. have a lot of engineering journals under SS. Yes, Prof. Farida, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Prof. Farida. Right. Um, prof. Ahnamaliza, just to 
share with the students. Um, since I was very much involved in general communication, Malaysian general communication. So basically, uh, when we choose, yeah, we do choose for um, those in social science and humanities. Yeah, but we try to look into some aspect that have communication elements. So if you want to do on, for Vivian, yeah, you want to do on education, try to have some communication element with education. And then the, um, the editors will yeah, consider, yeah, or else then, yeah, normally it will be rejected. Yeah, you, uh -huh. you need to have that communication element. Yes, very true for Harida, because it's like the title of journal is like literally communication. So if you want to submit, you have to do something on uh, discourse or something to do with communication. Uh, there's a lot. Advertising also in uh, under communication, right? Yeah. So Vivian, are you okay with it? I think you can, but like I mentioned just now, there's quite a number of uh, engineering journals in Malaysia, especially already registered in uh, WUS. So you can submit that one, that one as well. Those students under engineering, you can submit uh, to Malaysian journals. There's quite a number of it. But you just go to the website, you, and then if you want to, uh, actually the journals usually from universities in Malaysia. So if you are under mechanical engineering, you just put mechanical engineering, the list of all the journals under mechanical engineering. Uh, if not, you can just email to your library, email to library because mm -hmm. the librarian will have all the journals, uh, WUS journals, corpus journals from Malaysia as well as international. Just email them. They will definitely help you to find out the list of journals. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Okay, here there's a question here. Is it Elijah? Dr. Elijah? Yeah, yes, yes, Prof. I'm a bit shy to talk today. <laughs> okay, better. <laughs> Does the name on the, on the published materials have any impact and meaning in academic circles? Uh, how do you mean? Oh, what do you mean by this? Uh, I, I, I actually meant that uh, when we publish papers, we have seen uh, during our study, some professors would be saying that put my name first. And then uh, some will say your name comes first because it is uh, your paper or your work. So I wanted to know um, in the academic circles, when it comes to ownership of the material or recognition of the work, does that naming order like who is the first uh, the author number one, number two, number three, and two last author, does it have any impact uh, or any meaningful uh, 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 I, I mean, uh, is it, does it have any meaning in the academic circles uh, later when you want to use the papers later in life uh, as a student? Maybe they will be saying that uh, since the professor's name is the first, uh, you, you are not, uh, uh, you cannot use this paper for whatever you want to do. Or maybe the professors, uh, uh, some of them are, uh, they, they, they might be asking all the students to put in their names uh, or uh, some of us lecturers for the benefit of our KPI and everything at the cost of the students. So I wanted to hear from you, Prof. Uh, what impact does this have and who should actually be, if there is any impact, who should be the first, second, last author and so on and so forth. Okay, good right. question, Dr. Elisha. Very good question. You know why? That happens everywhere for everyone in the world, actually. Uh, for for academia, for promotion purposes, uh, to tell the truth, although they will they say that there's no impact, but it's actually there is impact. First name, definitely they know you have done like 80% of the work. And then the second name, they know that okay, this person is actually helping. Like quite a lot. And the third name is less. And the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and so on. Uh, because it depends. But if you actually from a uh, medic faculty, medical faculty, uh, because I've come across uh, an article from medical faculty, they have like nearly 15 to 20 names in that particular article. For authors, you just imagine. But they have the same impact because medical supposed to be in the team, supposed to be in the team. But us, 
especially uh, for education, language, and whatnot, is it's like uh, you know people are gonna say that definitely the number four, the your name is number four or number five or number six. You actually a passenger. You're not doing anything, right? They will ask you. You're not doing anything, right? They just put your name because you have written article. You put their name as well. It's like a swap thing, swap thing. Because this is this is actually uh, psychologically, if you check, uh, they will give less less impact for the last name. And then the second one is like a really good one, unless unless if let's say. But the thing is that we don't know your students, okay, your PhD student or your master student publish an article for the sake of graduation. So the student's name is going to be number one. And then your name, the first supervisor number two, and then and so on, supervisor number three, uh, number four, okay, and so on. But the thing is that this particular article, okay, only your university, they would know that the first name is a student. And then that student, uh, only university for the sake of the graduation. But if the lecturer, whose name is number two, the main supervisor, if he or she applied for promotion, okay, promotion and put the there for promotion. And then when the uh, the people at the registrar look at it, or the professors who want to assess you, they look at the, the second name. Oh, your name is number two. They don't even know the number one is a student. They don't know. They assume that they you are all in the team. So number two, less work. Number three, more or less work. So it depends. Uh, but, but the thing is that uh, for it's very lucky for those in from medical faculty because they have the same amount of impact for all. You just imagine if you read medical articles, I've read medical articles, it's only one page. Say what? You have to write like 5,000 words and you have only one page? And the name is like nearly 20 names because they are not like all these social science and engineering because we have to explain about this uh, really uh, really really in detail we have to explain no for them it's actually the result the result is important it's only one page and it's like registered under wolves you see the high impact the journal is so high impact like that's why we mentioned that one one in one year there are about like nearly five thousand articles cited that particular article that particular journal See how important it is. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. After this, Dr. Elisha, uh -huh. make sure, uh, Dr. Elisha, for my advice to you, like for example, for me, I have more than 10 group research. What uh -huh. I mean is, okay, so that's why I have like, because most of it was the, my end of my career here. I like, uh, I actually help all these young, young academicians and also as well as students. So I have like 10, more than 10 group research. For example, my group research number one, I have like four people, different people from different faculty, from different uh, university. Okay, my second group research would be from this one, but another one from different area. My third group would be blah, 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 blah. So usually we have meetings. Okay, okay, in the beginning of the year, okay, let's have a meeting. Okay, this year we come up with two articles. But then in this area, I will get this area and then we discuss about this. We discuss about it. So the more group research you have, it's actually the better because we are actually learning about the other area of expertise. So that's why your article is going to be very, very interesting to read. Not only, not only like in the same article that you're going to publish, you thought that it's something new. It's like novelty of research, where else 10 years ago, nearly similar article published the same thing uh, so that's why you must have group research oh, so fine. Uh, okay uh wonderful thank you Prof, for uh clarifying this up because uh last time i went through i was preparing my students for for publication and then there is uh, one article which uh, uh was written by uh, i i think i got it from uh, Cambridge university on the ordering of the names so their policy was that the student's name should come first. And then the supervisor's name is the last name. The other contributors, according to their percentage of contribution, will come in between. Huh? 
So that was the that that is the policy I normally use with my students after I I, I read that. But now I'm learning that uh, it might not be a a, a universal uh, universal policy. Yeah. So uh, uh, thank you for for for, for clarifying uh, that. The second uh, question I wanted you to just clarify was uh, uh, for 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 the benefit of us lecturers and also our our students. Since you mentioned the group, uh, these groups and, and all this, I also do believe in that uh, very much. But uh, does it help enough? Uh, that does it help a lot uh, in the development of uh, the student or the researcher? to publish papers in a wide varying range of, uh, of, of, uh, of topics. Um, you see, well, what, what is your recommendation? Should we stick to our area of expertise and build uh, our publications around our area of expertise? Or we can use everything to write or whenever we need anyone to write, like uh, I'm in IT, I might meet someone in engineering, and then uh, I contribute and then publish. It goes under my profile and everything. So when people are looking at my profile, uh, uh, like you know, these days you want to go for an interview, they have to look at your profile and then they see everything you are writing from uh, from from everywhere. everywhere. So I wanted to get your advice on on that one uh, for the benefit of us uh, lecturers and also. Uh, the students who are looking at uh, building up their profiles by IT. Uh, thank you. Oh, okay, Dr. Elisha, uh, just to make it clear, you were asking about the uh, if your students, okay, is it students' publication? Uh, students and uh, lecturers, uh, and lecturers, students mostly, students yeah, most, mostly for us lecturers, uh, we are meeting uh, maybe students from different uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, and then we help them to write papers and then they put ah. our names and everything. And then oh, at the end of the okay. day, it's mixed up everywhere. Yes. Okay. I've come across that one as well. Actually, they are actually uh, my, uh, all these junior lecturers at my university, they did ask me the same question as well. Uh, do we need, they, they ask, do we need to have focus on one particular expertise only when we want to have like uh, research? Uh, with the students and with the other lecturers, or can we have like multi-discipline uh, articles? Actually, this has been uh, done like from I think how many years ago, uh, more than 20 years ago, we actually can have multi-discipline articles. Okay, meaning to say that's what I said, I have like more than 10 group research from different disciplines. So if you want to advise your student, for example, and also other academicians, try to get because you know you want to come up with to come up with a very interesting article. So if you actually have focus, okay, let's say I'm uh, my expert expertise is on um, let me give an example uh, land survey, for example, land survey. If I were to write an article only on land survey, okay. And my group research, okay, my group is all with land survey. What's interesting about the article? There's nothing interesting. There's no multidiscipline. So I can have another researcher from a different field, which is a little bit related with land survey. I can add that research in my group, okay? From this particular person's perspective towards here, and I can put in the research group. I can ask uh, somebody from communication to be in my group as well in that particular person's perspective towards land survey. And I can ask somebody else from uh, mathematics, math, uh, to give their perspective so that I can come up with a formula. So different multidiscipline. And then at the end of the day, you, you, you are going to come up with a very interesting article, uh, which has all these, although you have variable with land survey, but the content of it, uh, the content when you have your evidence, you have your, uh, even in your literature review, is all multidisciplinary. You are actually helping each other and come up with a very beautiful paper. So, uh, so for example, the students, they are actually for, they have to write articles in order for them to graduate. Okay, especially for students from China, Vivian did mention that uh, 
uh, the country did uh, mention that they, it's compulsory for them to publish three articles in SSEI or SEI. Okay, just imagine to publish one is gonna be like so hectic, but then they have to publish three. Okay, now what they can do, okay, they cannot take everything from their thesis or else it's gonna end up like the plagiarism is gonna be like 40%, 50%, 60%. So you're copying your work. Uh, so you can take a little bit component from your thesis, come up with a new data, get the idea from your supervisor, who's actually expert in another field, okay, to put it in there, the second supervisor, and then the different field to put it in there, and then the third supervisor for, then I'm not sure you have like three supervisors, put it in there, to come up with their discipline, with multidiscipline. multidiscipline. Uh, so therefore, it's going to be very interesting. If you see, if you check my, uh, if you if you check my CV, for example, some of the CV is not specifically on my field, but that I contributed because my name is number one because I make sure that I learn, I study a lot from that particular area, and then I put it integrate together with my area, uh, because for example, if I'm doing this course, all other area will be related to this course. This course is only only not only this course. A. If I were to do in building, there's a discourse as well. If I were to do mechanical engineering, there will be discourse in mechanical engineering. I will am doing like medical, there will be discourse in medical. So this course is so wide, I can put everything in. So that's why I have like more than 10 uh, research groups from different fields, from different areas. So I advise to academicians as well as students who's, who's going to be lecturers soon, okay, try to make it like learn new things, multidisciplines, add, add your friends from uh, electrical engineering, for example, from land survey, from this one, from that one, uh, in such a way that you can come up with one good idea, which is your novelty from the research, novelty, make, make something interesting. Make it new so that everything when people read your paper, wow, this is really, really good. It's something new, not happen, not really. That's not, uh, nobody from ten years ago can write. This is now, so that's why. That's why, like for example, now is digital time. Everything is digital. Call people from uh, ICT, from uh, Faculty of uh, Computer Science. Get them to be in your team. So come up with this. See just now, this course in. Computer science, we have that one as well. So that's why my field is this course, I can do everything. Except that, okay, one more advice. You as an academician as well as students, you cannot give reasons that uh, I cannot write, I have mental law, I cannot write, I have writer's block. No way, that's ridiculous. I have that kind of experience. I have like writer's block for six months. That is not writer's block, that is lazy. Okay, writer's block is not be like until six months. Uh, uh, but then I probably got that one and then I end up like saying that I'm actually a lazy person. That, that, uh, but then try to make sure that that's why writer's block happen, okay, uh, has happened when you are actually don't know what to write because you have written everything already in your area. So that's why to make it interesting, again, get somebody else from different area to be in research and then you're gonna be so excited. Wow, this is something new. I want to do something on that one, something different. I want to do something on a cosmetic, which is not my field at all. I want to have, so that means I have this course in cosmetic. There's so many things, you know, I can write. So, so it's gonna be interesting. So there's no more writer's block. So that's why I have like so many. And now, Francis speaking, I don't know what to write because I'm done with my field already. I'm trying to get new ones. So that I can write more. I can write more. So that's why I have like uh, I have other friends that uh, this is education uh, among academician friends, whereby we only talk on the phone only for academic purposes. Not to say that oh how are you? No, we don't do that. We don't we don't ask how are you. No, that's ridiculous. We just ask. Have you done with this? Are you done? Let Let's share. Okay, that's it. Uh, I hope I can answer your question, Dr. Elisha. I don't know when. Once a perfect, perfect answer. Thank you so much, Prof. Be motivated, Dr. Elisha. Find your research group. Uh, research group. If they don't want, just uh, just have legal action. 
You, you, you will be the first member. Huh? You are getting an email from me tomorrow. <laughs> you can have uh, you can have group research, no problem. Any from different faculty ask me to be in the group. I say no problem. I yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Very Even much. students, don't forget students here in this. Uh, I can see there's so many students here. I know you you are you you have your masters and you're gonna do your PhD. When you do uh, you have finished your PhD, definitely gonna be one of the academicians like all of us here. So just just get a lot of networking right now okay and not yes yeah, there are so many are you get lecturers here go to them ask them although you're supposed to finish your phd but then get it get them to the team for your article and then you can have like new ideas you can be very motivated and then you really want to you don't have any writer's block yet at the moment or later on so get make it interesting Okay, that's question here. I can see. Uh, there are some that can be included in SEI or EI. Uh, yes, this one already mentioned just now. You can check in the website that I give you. You can also check uh, email your librarian. Okay, the librarian who's in charge of the journals. If you are a bit lazy to check the website, just email them. They can list give you a list of Malaysian journals and the WUS. Malaysian journals and the scopus and openness everything they can give it to you okay you can also check the website that i gave you from upm that all the uh, the wos journals wos journal wos journals uh, which you you can get full article full article free you don't need to pay for it it's free so you can just go to the website click in any area that you want to check okay uh any questions uh oh here how can we pick good journal to publish review papers if number was more than what ten thousand wow okay this is from uh mr mahir tahrir uh because you want to publish review papers okay review papers i'm sure Dr. farida can uh, give can share uh, because you have uh, Prof. Arida, you have review papers uh, in uh, general communication as well, right? Uh, so what do you think about the percentage? Because for our part, if we want to get promotion, review review papers, let's say we want to review books or review whatnot, it's not the same of writing your own article. new article. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -mm, yep. Uh, basically, review papers, we have special section. The, uh, we, we will put reviews. It is under one separate section. So basically some of the international journals, they also have that in terms of sections because they don't mix review paper and the usual uh, research paper. The focus yeah. of course uh, for journals, they always look for um, research papers. That's the main focus of most uh, Scopus or um, WAS journal, yeah, ISI journal, they will go for research papers. Review, only certain journal will go for review. Just my advice is that for students to look into, identify the journals that you want to go into, yeah, especially uh, the journals that you pick must be uh, in the same discipline as you are in, all right, because uh, it matters. If you publish in different discipline and in a different uh, publication, so you have to choose within your discipline that will be, you know, more added value to that, right? And uh, study the journal. You need to study uh, the content of journal. Look into uh, some of the articles that have been published, right? You have some insight on uh, the content of the journal. Then you can tailor your writing. Yeah, your articles um, according to the need of the journal. Uh, because uh, some writers, they didn't look into the uh, journals and they want to contribute to the journal. Yeah, and that could be uh, some reason for rejection. So you have to understand uh, the content, yeah, the format uh, of the particular journal. All right. And another thing is that uh, since you are contributing in, in that journal, so try to look into previous articles. Yeah in the journal and try to quote, yeah? Try to quote two or three 
uh, journal articles in your article. All right, so that, that will add on to what we call the added value because most journals would want to see also uh, the potential writer are also quoting their journal. So of course that will yeah. add on in the citation yeah, index later on. So, so these are some of the uh, you know, uh, tips that uh, I, would, I would tell uh, writers. Yeah? So you have to understand uh, the content of the journal because some journal don't accept review, right? Yeah. In fact, most journals don't accept review. They would go for uh, basically uh, research, yeah, research mm -hmm. articles. But there are also some journals that uh, focus on conceptual. Yeah, they do have conceptual framework in the articles and reviews. Reviews don't cover so much. Sometimes if they have review, it will be um, out of 20 papers, you only have like two reviews, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Professor Reda. Very, uh, that one very mind for students, uh, for students especially, and also for academician. If you are, if you want to apply for promotion, I don't think review of article would be one of them, uh, because they really want to know your own research, uh, rather than you review somebody else's article. Might as well you have your own data, you have your own evidence. So it's yours. Uh, so that one for promotion purposes for lecturers, but. For students, uh, I think even the university, they won't accept review papers for your graduation purposes, right, for Farida? I have. Uh, for PhD, you have like two papers, right, that you need to um, publish, right, or there is some notification from the editor that it will be published. So on Viva time, you need to show the evidence of two. Publication. So the first could be conceptual paper or review paper, and the second one would be from your findings, yeah, based on uh -huh. the findings, yeah, in your thesis. So it is allowed. Oh, it is allowed for. Yeah, it is allowed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good news for you. Mm -hmm. So, so for students, it's good news, right? Concept paper or one article for the first year of your study, and then the second year of study, make sure you have your data with you. So that means your original research. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Farida. Uh, actually, there's one more question here. Siti Bosleha is not in. I know this person. Okay, she asked, uh, how many authors should be in one article? Is it good uh, if we have more than three? More than three. Uh, I'm not sure of this, but it actually depends on your job right now. If you're, you're writing an article for promotion, they don't actually advise uh, for you to have more than four. Uh, UPM actually, I don't know whether this is here stay or what, UPM they advise not to have more than four because usually the fifth or the sixth author, they know there are only passengers. Uh, they know that they don't even contribute anything for that particular article. Just They, they just put the name there for the sake of butter trade. Okay, you write the article, you put my name. I write the article, you, I put your name. It's something like that. So for IUKL, I'm not sure for your, but the best thing is that why not, if you have more writers, write another one. Write another article. Uh, in such a way that the last writer would be number four, at least has meaning as compared to the six or seven, but it's different for medical. Like I said, is it true for Are you um, All right. Um, yeah, I am involved in the uh, promotional exercise yeah, for professor and for assistant professor. Now, uh, when we look into the CV, first author matters. So we mm -hmm. always count first author, whether you are the first author. This is for academicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it matters uh, how many uh, articles that you have and you as the first author. And then only we come and uh, evaluate you as the second author. So if you can make it, yeah, if you have groups of um, a team, yeah, so make sure that you rotate. Uh, for one article, you are the first author. For the second article, you're the, uh, you're the second author. For the third article, another person is the first author. So everybody has the first author uh, privilege. Yeah, because uh, we always count, yeah, in terms, I think it also happened in other universities also. Yeah, first author counts. Yeah, it's true, Paul, that is true. 
Because the thing is that if let's say if you ask for promotion to associate professor, you have 20 articles already listed, but make sure that half of it, that means 10 of the, from 20 would be you are the first author. Uh, because if let's say you have 20 articles when you submit for your promotion, only one article for main author, the rest would be your, your second, third or fourth. That one, maybe your name is definitely not supposed to be there. Uh, so do not apply for promotion because it's quite embarrassing uh, to have 20 articles, suddenly you have only one main author. So what have you been doing all this while? Isn't it? Okay, uh, so any more questions? Oh, is it for the papers that publish conferences will be the same value that publish in journal? Okay, uh, this happened just now when I showed it to you that um, uh, there are actually lists of article uh, journals from proceeding already registered in Rose and also in Scopus. Okay, uh, is it the same? But this this happened to me actually because um, when it's conference the style of writing for bibliography in your citation would be different as article. So for book, I, I'm not sure for IUKL, uh, for, for us, if conference, although it's like published in, published in uh, uh, CIJ, it's definitely still under conference. Uh, so the value is actually different unless they ask us face to face, then only we mention it uh, to them that this conference paper is actually uh, submitted to Woz Journal and it's an impact factor, blah, 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 unless, yeah. But if the, the assessor for promotion did not realize it, so this person will consider this paper as conference paper. So you make sure that maybe you highlight something in your, when you do, you when you ask for promotion. But then I'm, I'm not sure, are you KL, can you accept uh, conference papers if published in words be accepted as one of the okay, yeah. yeah, 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 we'll, we will look into the uh, evidences, all right, if you uh, submitted conference paper and you claim that uh, it is in, yeah, in words uh well science or is scopus then it is considered scopus and it's considered as was um yes. basically we need to see the evidences especially yes. for yes. you know for proceeding because there are proceeding as you have said just now prof uh yes. proceedings that claim to be under scopus or proceeding that claim to be under isi yeah so normally uh, when we evaluate we will look for the yeah for the yes. evidences and of course it will be yes. counted and then they have to submit the evidence right the the evidence of the article itself. Articles, yeah yeah, yeah. oh thank you so much prof Raida. you helped me a lot today uh, i think i there's no more what is this uh for the first author can have more than one in one journal okay i don't understand what this one oh, meaning to say that you submit more than one article in the same journal. Is it Miss? Is it Mr. Adum Abdullah? For the first or uh, no? Okay, what is it? Can you tell us? Can somebody help with that question? Uh, what what I mean. Two first author in one journal. Okay, perhaps I can. Are you? Yes, please. All right. From the uh, from the side of the uh, uh, journal, yeah. Normally, uh, we don't allow. Or I'm talking from a journal communication and a Malaysian Journal of Communication. Yeah, um, we don't allow uh, having the same author. Yeah in the same issue. Meaning oh, to say, if I do, you have two yeah. articles and two in the first issue. No, we don't, yeah? Normally, journal communication does not allow. The Scopus journal, yeah? They don't allow. If you want, then you have to have, you're not the first author, yeah? Perhaps you are the second author or third author, then it's okay. But not having your name as first author in the same issue. 
yeah, perhaps you have to wait for another two or three issues and submit another one. All right, so normally uh, journals, they are very particular about uh, that. Yeah, giving, perhaps they are looking at giving equal opportunity yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, and what I mean like uh, two people that they, they do have equal contribution for one journal and both of them, they want to have the first author. That's what I mean, if they can. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh yeah. they actually, they, properly done, they're actually fighting for the first name, uh, <laughs> for the first name. They are actually contributed the same amount of work. But then I want my name to be number one. And he said he wants his name to be number one. Ah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, so this is what I think you have to fight at home. And then you decide. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to be fair. Okay. So both, because both work very hard. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said you have to look into, okay, the first article is your name. The second yeah. article is your friend's name. Uh, so it's fair and square. But of yeah. course, you have to look from different angle. Yeah. From your... Yeah, different uh, data that you have. Yeah, you cannot have similar data and you submit. Yeah, so uh, general would, wouldn't accept that. Yeah. You have to be fair. Yeah. Okay, you have to thank, you. Right. Uh, okay think, thank you very much. I do, like I mentioned just now, you can yeah. have so many group research. So yeah. you, you with your friend, you have one group research. Find another group research with different person. <laughs> so you can have so many papers. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Prof, I, I met this problem uh, uh, before during my, my studies. Uh, so I was also advised by one professor that the first name, what, what uh, they normally use to consider who is the first author is normally the owner of the idea. You cannot say that the idea is both ours, you thought about it at the same time. So that would be the differentiating factor. Huh? Not, not uh, if you have equal contribution, then you have to go to the next stage to look whose idea was it. Then that uh, becomes the, uh, the the first author of the of the article. So it will never be uh, a, a problem uh, if you use that criteria. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you are right, Doctor Elisha. <coughs> it's whereby you are suggesting you are suggesting that research. So you yes. are the main author. Yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, I, uh, last question, is it? I have written a book chapter of the book published by, uh, what is this? UNICEF, is it? Before I joined PhD. The chapter is related to my PhD topic. Well, this also can be considered for the requirement. Okay, this one, Prof. Farida can answer because this one is actually for IUKL. Basically, <clears throat> um, what we want yeah, is um, publication that comes out of your current PhD. So meaning to say, the one that you have printed before, because even the, the date, yeah, when you have your book chapter, the date is perhaps 20, 2020, and you are just registered as a student, 2021, all right? So that's why the publication have to be within that time frame, okay? Within the time frame that you register as a student, all right? So meaning to say, if you register in 2021, so anything that you produce, book chapter, uh, proceedings, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Seminar paper, uh, journals, you have to be from 2021 onwards, all right? So anything that is before, is not counted, even though it is related to your uh, study, all right? Perhaps you can take some of the idea from the book chapter, tune it, all right, and make it into a conceptual paper, and you print another book chapter, yeah, or a concept paper in a journal, mm -hmm. uh, then it is counted. The main, the main uh, requirement is that it has to be within the time frame that you are registered as a PhD student. Yeah. So uh, I hope well, it's clear. Is it, is it clear, uh, 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 Yes, yes, Professor. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, 
So it's not the same year, right? It's not the same year that you publish your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Actually, UNCDF is United Nations Capital Development Fund. It, this is UN agency. I have written a book after under uh, uh, for uh, that particular that book was published for urban financing, urban financing and focusing on Nepal. And that all of the article was uh, reviewed by the one professor from Duke University. Uh, I unfortunately I forget his name, uh, but uh, uh -huh. all of the articles were reviewed by that professor, and it is a good good book published by UNCD of UN agency. That's why I was asking this question. Thank you very much for your, uh -huh. for your answer. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Ida, by the yeah. way, one more question. I just want to ask you: Can what about the masters or PhD students? Can they uh, publish in chapter in books? for graduation purposes any Is any publication possible? any publication so it can be journal it can be a book chapter uh, it could be conference paper it could be concept paper because we are talking about masters yeah masters only and field master with research they are required to just come out with just one wow. publication phd phd two phd two so, masters with coursework not required not required to so the uh, phd uh just now you mentioned can it be a conference paper but it has to be published uh okay at the point of um the students are going for their viva yeah if it's not published yet but you have that notification from the conference organizer that it will be published uh, then oh. it is considered as one uh, uh yeah so one should be published. So it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether it's CIJ or non CIJ? No, no, no. Not for IUKL. IUKL is okay. Yeah, it's a referred paper. Uh, should be okay. Um, Scopus, yeah, all the more okay. Yeah, but there is no uh, clause that a student have to um, submit Scopus, uh, uh. Scopus Journal or ISI Journal or WS Journal. No, yeah. uh, there is no uh, requirement for that. But yeah. the requirement is you have to have two publications, yeah? And it could be, uh, you know, just uh, a reference refer journal, just IUKL Research Journal, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's a reference journal. It's not Scopus yet, but one day I hope it will be Scopus. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, Dr. Siti Nolia, you better do something about that journal. Actually, actually, we have a new plan for IUKL Journal. So, uh, me, uh, especially uh, for Farida, she will uh, give her, what you call it, give her input uh, this time around because we want to give a fresh uh, face onto IUKL Journal to improve it from time to time and we are targeting this index. So, I think it is good because it opens a more opportunity uh, on allowing or uh, providing platform for students to publish. We also will encourage uh, lecturers to publish in uh, Scopus Index Journals in order for them to apply for uh, promotion uh, or apply for associate professor and even uh, for grant purposes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Alia has done a very good job yeah, for IUKL Research Journal. Um, okay. The last IUKL Research Journal will be under uh, Dr. Alia, yeah, as the Editor-in-Chief. And um, that will be 2020, yeah, mm -hmm. 2020. So Dr. Alia is finishing up the 2020 uh, volume. Uh, I'll be coming in for this year, 2021. And the new flagship journal yeah, will be called GERM, G-I-R-M, Journal of Infrastructure Research and Management. So it is open to all, you know, open to all these things, multi discipline. Oh, oh. right. Yeah. So for, it'll be for 2021, for this year. E, say again. For this year. Yeah, 2021. Beginning 2021, it will be GERM. It will oh. be J I R M. Uh, it's no longer I U K L R J. Okay. Yeah. News for students, I U K L students, you can submit your articles now. Hmm. Uh, so, any more questions, Dr. Nazita? Any more, Dr. Nazita? 
Uh, I don't think so, Prof. I think we're done with all the questions. Yep, all right. Um, we have answered all the questions. Prof. Arida has also answered all the questions. Uh, and it's 12 o'clock, yeah. Uh, so I think that's uh, the end of the session for today. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Normaliza, and of course, Prof. Arida as well for the input. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of the centre and of course, this, uh, the University, Infrastructure University, Kuala Lumpur. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Dr. Normaliza. Uh, she's very dear to my heart personally. Uh, she was the first person, one of the first persons to encourage me to do my PhD. Yeah, uh, I, that, that means a lot, yeah, and who, who, who kept me going, yeah. Um, you can see her personality, uh, she always sets objectives and we must always meet the objectives. Everything has got to be properly planned. I think that was clearly shown in the, in the talk, yeah, and I think exactly what we need to do. If we want to publish, we need to properly plan. And we have got the details, yeah, for example, Certain journals will require certain uh, amount of time, yeah, duration for approval and whatnot. And that has got to be uh, taken into consideration when you do your PhD, for example. If you want to graduate in two years' time, you want to graduate in another one year's time, then this publication requirement has got to be properly planned so that you're not going to get stuck. Yeah? Because uh, if you don't have evidence of publication, you cannot submit your thesis. Yeah? So it's important to have that planning in place. Yeah? Uh, thank you so much once again, uh, Prof. Dr. Normaliza, uh, not only sharing the knowledge, yeah, uh, the input, you have also shared uh, some access to um, certain links yeah, available on UPM's uh, library. I think that helps a lot. Yeah. So I guess uh, that's all the time that we have for today's talk. And in fact, this is the final talk for this semester. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to take a short break because it's going to be exam week yeah, and also semester break. We will meet again for postgraduate talk series in the um, uh, March semester. All right. So um, uh, I guess that's about it. Yeah. So once again, thank you so much, Prof. Arida. The participants, uh, please remember to fill out the attendance list. Yeah. We can. Um, uh, we will update uh, the uh, attendance list. Yeah. Uh, particularly for the postgraduate students, as evidence of your participation in our training sessions and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, take care. We will see you again next semester for uh, our postgraduate talk series. Yeah. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Tadiwa. Have you taken photos? Have no, no, no. Oh, uh, yeah, let, let me take one up. Huh? Can okay. we all uh, just just a moment? Yep. Uh, I, I Can we all I, turn on the uh, video, uh, the camera for a while? Uh, we would like to take photos. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not easy to get Prof. Dr. Normaliza. She is actually very expensive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we we can't afford her actually, yeah. But yeah, uh, she's very kind uh, to share with us. All right, so uh, Dr. Tadiwa, could you kindly take photos, yeah? All right, okay. Uh, so just one moment. All right. My camera set up. Is ready? Okay. Five, three, one. Okay. Right. Uh, just a moment. Uh, I will take another one. Okay, I uh, move to another screen. Okay, four, two, one. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> till we meet again. Take care, All everyone. Right. Stay safe. Bye. 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 See you again. <laughs> okay.